good morning good afternoon however you wanted to see <coughs> i'm just one session away from our lunch and <laughs> as don't worry i'll make it uh, as interesting as possible we are going to talk about uh, how we do monitoring at paypal and at also at this scale a brief introduction about uh, paypal and i'll go over the paypal's monitoring platform architecture and uh, abhishek here will go over what we contributed for grafana we contributed grafana druid plugin for druid he'll talk about uh, his journey and uh, how to use it and we'll have 10 15 minutes for q and a let's start with that question how many of you guys use paypal that's good very much uh, who am i am the architect for paypal's monetary pl platform and uh, i've been with uh, ebay slash paypal for 13 years this is my 13th year at uh, paypal been at uh, ebay for 12 years we got split last year now i, I took the paypal side of uh, story uh, leading leading the monitoring platform as an architect or uh, way in which uh, paypal works is there is a central monitoring platform for the entire paypal we are the team that uh, monitors we are the team that are responsible for the entire site we'll go over how we manage everything and abhishek here uh, he is a senior software engineer in our team he is a contributor for uh, grafana plugin okay this is not the nasa mission uh, mission central uh, this is uh, this is not in houston this is in uh, paypal san jose campus this is our uh, mission critical command center where we monitor making sure your transfers money transfers are happening seamlessly across the globe we know paypal uh, paypal is uh, spread across in 192 countries Uh, sorry, one, 200 countries, about 192 active, 192 million active users uh, doing money transfers, trans transactions uh, in uh, in our PayPal platform. So that's why our mission is very critical. So the mission is to make sure your experiences are seamless. So we are, as I said, we are a central monitoring platform. Uh, the way in which we are measured is by ttd time to detect how quickly we help our teams both sre uh, development team as well as uh, uh, site engineering teams to detect the problems and then we also help them how quickly we, we, they could uh, find out the problems we call it as ttt time to triage or time to recover is ttr these are all the three kpis that our monitoring platform is measured against in uh, paper okay this is how our uh, monitoring ecosystem uh, looks like again as during this talk we'll hear uh, paper is a polyglot we have different la programming languages we have different stacks n number of uh, different types of uh, data platforms that we use uh paypal embraced uh, microservices uh, to the largest extent we have more than 2000 plus microservices in our platform so which makes us that's the reason we have this uh, command center which is look like nasa's command center so starting from uh, left to the right uh, we collect plat uh, data from all data sources be it uh, load balancers routers uh, application servers and uh, databases and uh, infrastructures uh, you'll see something called uh, cal again uh, this is our logging platform which we call it as uh, central application logging that is a central infrastructure that collects logs from each and every application servers that also helps us to monitor application metrics as well and uh, we have our central monitoring platform in just both logs as well as metrics from all this uh, uh, systems and not not only that we also derive metrics 
from our logging platform as well. So essentially, we have uh, uh, three streams coming in, our metric streams, our log streams, and our event streams. That's where our configuration, as and when people change configurations, we also uh, need to let them know what has changed. Get them the visibility in one platform. Hey, my, uh, there is something that's going on. You get the signal, time to detect. And then uh, we also wanted to find out, give them the logs that were giving, giving those signals, and also let them know what was the configuration that went in so that people could immediately roll back. So that's, that's why this is one central platform which does everything for the entire uh, community. The community down there is developers, command center, and then our analyst as well. Uh, analyst includes both business analyst and capacity planning, and uh, SRE. Uh, they are on the second line next to our command center people. So in the middle is our the platform. So we have both uh, we process, collect logs from all these platforms, metrics, as well as uh, uh, logs, process them, and then uh, we have an insights engine and an alerts engine to operate and do correlation across all these signals and alert them. And as well as uh, we started uh, venturing into our remediation as well. Uh, we haven't, we just started on it uh, since we have uh, got gained the expertise of uh, getting in the mode of trying to identify, not necessarily identify the situation, also identify, identify the problems as well as the situation. Now we are switching gears towards uh, taking actions, examples like rolling back the configuration, rolling back what went into a particular pool or a particular cluster. And uh, not necessarily that, we have exposed all, all of them as an, uh, common APIs uh, to provide visualization into, uh, to provide visualization to all what's happening inside the site. From our platform, as I said, uh, we have a diverse set of uh, data sources, as well as uh, uh, processing platform, as well as visualization. Let's start from right to left again. Uh, we use uh, Druid and OpenTSTB, which is our uh, metrics, uh, metrics platform, and Elasticsearch and Hadoop for our uh, log, uh, log infrastructure storing. And then uh, Kafka is our message bus, and uh, Scubes is again uh, another one, well, yet another open source venture from uh, PayPal. PayPal does embrace uh, uh, open source community a lot. Scubes is an, another contribution from PayPal. This is an ACA based and framework which is very similar to actor based model, uh, very similar to ACA. Uh, it provides a high, through, high throughput uh, processing uh, for. Uh, for the monitoring needs. Uh, I'll go over uh, where we use cubes, and uh, we use Spark Streaming for our aggregation needs. Uh, because uh, typically in any of the monitoring things, aggregation plays a major role. Uh, when, we, when we talk about aggregation, we talk about uh, two things. One is uh, spatial aggregation, and another one is temporal aggregation. When I say uh, spatial aggregation, we collect metrics uh, raw metrics from every machine uh, that is running, every machine or a container that is running application services, and uh, every instance, let's go, let, let me put it that way, CPU, memory, uh, GCs, overhead, and whatnot. And then we need to roll it up at the cluster level to get, uh, to, get to the height, get to the health of cluster, whether, whether my cluster is doing well or not. That's what we call it as a, a spatial aggregation. And, the next level is not necessarily only the cluster, we also roll it up at the availability zone, whether this availability is doing well or not. So that's what we call it as a spatial aggregation. The next level is uh, temporal. Uh, again, being the diverse set of uh, data sources, databases uh, we collect at uh, second level. There are some instances where our data resolution is uh, a second. There are some instances that are at 10 seconds. There are uh, instances we have our data resolution granularity is at uh, 60 seconds. So we roll it up, all of them at uh, minute level, 10 minutes, and hourly, so that uh, we get a, uh, we can compare hour or hour, day over day, day over day, or week over week for deviations, for alerting purposes. So that's what uh, this processing tier is providing us 
All these aggregations are done in uh, the processing queues. And uh, uh, we leveraged, we heavily leveraged uh, Grafana as our uh, uh, visualization tool. Partly reason because we have data is lying across in multiple data sources. Grafana is a de facto tool for us to leverage it because I'll be in a position to correlate, see multiple graphs. I wish I could go over some of the uh, screenshots of it. Multiple graphs from multiple data sources in one dashboard. That's the power of uh, Grafana that we leverage. And Kibana is for uh, our exploratory, uh, exploratory searches. The reason we use Kibana for our, our log searches, anything that is near real time goes into our elastic search. Elastic search with, together with uh, Kibana that provides you the drill down capabilities, getting into the logs uh, further. And then uh, since we mentioned about central application logging, all the logs goes into our Hadoop cluster and then we also have generated, uh, uh, we generate reports out of Hadoop cluster which provides you the highest granularity in the sense like I can go to the, uh, I can go to the exception level, I try to figure out what is happening on what cluster, on what uh, URI per se. So this is how our uh, monitoring architecture looks like. Uh, this, this is at the 30,000 feet level, just to uh, give a glimpse of uh, uh, each one of uh, our diverse data sources. Uh, the first one is application servers deployed in multiple data centers, uh, multiple availability zones, and uh, we collect them uh, using our own agents for logs, uh, as well as metrics. They go, they go into a Kafka bus, uh, and then this is, uh, this is the data pipeline for logs and metrics coming in from application servers. Uh, what it means is when you say metrics, this is the application le level metrics that developers have uh, coded in. We have, we have provided our own library for the CAL so that applications teams could uh, instrument their own metrics. Hey, if you wanted to get, what, uh, get a checkout level conversion, what is the entry point, what is the exit point? They need to correlate and find out what is the conversion percentage. That level of application monitoring is, could be done using our metrics. For those people who are here yesterday, uh, morning, uh, we adopted metrics 2.2 .2 as our standard for our own library. And uh, the next one is our, all about infrastructure. Same story here. We collect uh, uh, metrics as well as logs uh, from different uh, different types of infrastructures, both load balancers, uh, um, from load balancers all the way to the application servers. Both of them goes into a, a messaging a messaging bus. The bulk of the work, heavy lifting, is done by our streaming pro stream processing layer. As I mentioned, in the stream processing, we use uh, Skubes, we use Kaf, uh, Spark, and we use our own, uh, yet another in-house uh, streaming technology because uh, the, uh, the output of our streaming technology goes into our storage tier. Uh, example. We use cubes to uh, consume messages from Kafka bus and directly ingest into Elasticsearch. Cubes has a very good uh, uh, high throughput system. It provides you the transformation capabilities that you wanted to do at a low, low uh, very high throughput, but uh, with a smaller footprint. And uh, for stream processing into Druid, we use uh, Spark. Again, uh, we do transformations and aggregations uh, in, in the streaming, streaming tier, that's the reason you will see streaming tier puts back the data into Kafka and then uh, you can ingest back into any of your storage uh, system. The next layer is uh, Hadoop. One of the key things, uh, what, what we did at PayPal is uh, processing the logs and putting it into our Hadoop system and we are generating reports from the Hadoop system that are also available into Grafana. That was one of the key things that, uh, that we did. Uh, again, it all depends on data latencies. The data that goes into TSTB is uh, immediately available in less than a minute. Uh, the reason uh, which we used, uh, which we chose uh, TSTB is because it scales very well for uh, our, the number of metrics that gets ingested. 
Right now, uh, our input to our TSTB system is somewhere around 350K metrics per second. That's a volume, input volume, to 350 data points that goes into our TSTB system. 350,000 data points that goes into our system. <coughs> and then for Druid, uh, the difference between Druid, the reason why we adopted Druid was uh, TSTB has a limitation of 12 dimensions or 12 tags. With Druid, you could have multiple uh, dimensions. Uh, the story for our TSTB is TTD. When it comes to TTT, we use uh, Druid because I'll be in a position to slice and dice it to a, uh, to a particular cluster, to a URL, to an exception, to that particular granularity. And Elasticsearch, we all know to do a freeform lock search on Elasticsearch. You can get to the core problem, you can find out what, if I see an exception, uh, if I, the story is, I, can, I get the signal in TSTB, then get to the level of, at what level you wanted to go, either to a cluster level, and then pick up, if it is an error or if it is an exception, count that went in, go to Elasticsearch, try to pick, that, pick, up, pick up that exception, and then if you wanted to really go to the real log view of where that exception happened and which cluster, which machine, what exactly had happened, use Hadoop search. Uh, that's what we expose it as our, our log views. So that is our end-to-end -end, uh, uh, logging and monitoring pipeline that our platform provides. Everything is uh, within minutes. By the time log uh, reaches Hadoop and it is available for search, it's five minutes. TT, TSTB is less than a minute. Druid is, uh, again, less than a minute. Uh, Elasticsearch is, again, less than a minute. So within five minutes, we'll be in a position to pinpoint where exactly uh, the problem was happening. That, that's, what, that's our success story of our monitoring. And uh, again, from the dashboard capabilities, we have exposed all the storage layers as a uh, single API. That way, other teams could develop their own dashboards and develop, leverage our platform. Hi, this is Abhishek. Uh, so why monitoring is important at PayPal? The primary reason is like, as we lose uh, the payments, we lose money. So that's very critical, right? So uh, as Senthil explained, time to detect and time to recover is very critical in applications which involve direct end-to-end -end payments or uh, the mission critical uh, areas. So I would uh, summarize on Grafana Druid plugin, which we recently contributed. You can find it on grafana.net plugins data sources. Just look for Druid. Um, so uh, we primarily use uh, Druid uh, Hadoop reports uh, and OpenTSDB, and that's why we adopted Grafana, because in single visualization framework, you can uh, plot the data from different data sources, and that's the beauty which Grafana provides us. Um, so Druid uh, query editor, or the Druid plugin supports uh, time series, group by, top end, and select queries uh, for the Druid, which are also supported on the back end. Um, so these are the basic examples or the basic uh, charts which we, we could plot from, the, uh, from using Druid uh, various uh, queries. Query types like time series, you see the basic trend of how uh, the payments are being made, uh, just the raw uh, metrics and dimension combinations. Uh, Topin gives you, let's say, uh, I want to know what all countries have maximum failed, uh, failed customer interactions. So give me Topin countries with failed customer interactions, so you, you get, get that in one shot. You can limit, the, the, a lot of things you can do on the top of this using the query editor. Group by gives uh, uh, added advantage on the top end uh, by having multiple uh, dimension combinations. Uh, so for example, in this, we have a group by by AZs, which is availability zones. So uh, give me failed customer interactions on uh, different availability zones uh, in PayPal. Uh, so you, you get to know, okay, which availability zone has a maximum failed customer interaction in, through that, you can drill the uh, drill down to further, uh, like uh, host level, uh, sorry, pool level, host level, and also to the exception level, which I'll show in the next slide. 
The select query just gives you the raw uh, rows uh, which you obtained, uh, which are already stored in the data source. Uh, so this is one of the examples which we wanted to show because how we leverage Grafana for multiple data sources. So let's assume we uh, we have a failure rate in one of uh, in the different availability zones A Z one two and three. We identify the uh, the failure rate is highest in uh, AZ2. The uh, one of the approaches, uh, one of the approaches to uh, drill down to the pool machine and uh, get the list of hosts which are causing issues. And the other approach uh, we also follow is to see what each and every data source gives us. For example, uh, if we get the failure rate uh, in the Open TSDB and we identify one AZ, the next step we go is which URIs, or give me the top end failing URIs for that particular AZs. So that gives you an understanding, okay, these are the URLs, uh, there's a problem in checkout, there's a problem in some other tier which involves payments or which involves some other components in the paper. And then you further drill down to the log or exception level, which we do it through Hadoop report. So we have an internal uh, Grafana plugin for generating uh, uh, the Hadoop, uh, the, uh, extracting data from Hadoop using PIG. And uh, we have a REST endpoint through which the Grafana connects and uh, it does some formatting which Grafana likes and plots graphs. So you can, uh, again, get uh, the top end exceptions and you can drill down to the log view to get what exactly is happening uh, from the top level, level which involves all the AZs, uh, availability zones, to the log level. So that's the basic uh, advantage and that's how we are leveraging Grafana. So this is TSDB Druid and Hadoop Reports is our custom uh, Grafana plugin. Uh, we can take in questions. Uh, the question was how scalable is uh, Druid and uh, if uh, uh, TSDB has limitations of uh, uh, tag lim a number of uh, dimensions, why can't we uh, directly mode, uh, get rid of TSTB and move on to uh, Druid? Very valid question. Uh, so one of the reasons why we went uh, with uh, Druid was the need for supporting multiple uh, dimensions. Uh, there are use cases where uh, we, have, uh, we, uh, we have a need for supporting 100 plus dimensions. We want to slice and dice by country, by, by cluster, by AZ, and again, uh, Druid has a, a better advantage of supporting high cardinality because it is a columnar database. And uh, the other advantages with uh, Druid was uh, it does uh, roll-ups, aggregation on the fly. Uh, in TSTB, you need, say for example, if you need to do it for a 60 second uh, aggregation, you need to collect and then ingest into uh, uh, Druid. So, sorry, ingest into uh, TSTB. So be, there comes your latency because you will be uh, you will be doing a local aggregation or processing tiers, collects all the data for 60 seconds and then writes as a single metric into uh, TSTB. And uh, by the time you wanted to alert, then we uh, we may not be alerting on a single signal. We might to alert on looking at multiple signals. So that's why it causes latency. That's the reason we adopted uh, uh, Druid because we can uh, in Druid we can ingest raw data, and then uh, using real time indexes we can get uh, uh, Druid. Or we can query Druid as the data is getting ingested. So that way uh, that way it works out, and you can also have multiple uh, dimensions. So to your question. Why not uh, go back? Uh, so uh, our Druid journey, we started uh, uh, just a year or so. We're still uh, learning all the, uh, all the nitty gritty details of uh, Druid. We have three such uh, uh, Druid uh, clusters. With, when it comes to open TSTB, uh, uh, we, had, uh, we had the advantage of yeah. being one of the early adopters of yeah. open, open TSTB <laughs> and then customized, customizing, uh, customizing it to, to the highest scale. So that's the reason uh, we are still evaluating. Uh, we'll be moving towards uh, uh, more Druid use cases. But are we at the stage where we, I'll, I'm uh, quickly can get rid of TSTB as well as move on to Druid? I'm not. The answer is we are still looking into it. Mm -hmm. So one of the thing to consider, one of the uh, one of the important aspect that we are considering is uh, the reason is uh, cost. Uh, when it comes to TSTB, it provides a uh, very good compression. Uh, we are, uh, in fact, uh, we have one of the biggest cluster of uh, 
uh, Clash TV clusters. Uh, yeah, after Yahoo and eBay, I think PayPal has the biggest uh, Clash TV cluster. Uh, so going back to your question, um, cost, yeah. uh, cost is one of the uh, aspects because uh, the way in which uh, DSTB stores metadata and the way in which uh, uh, Druid stores metadata are, are different because uh, Druid stores all of them into uh, inside the shards. So it all depends on how uh, how you are aggregating and how you are doing your shards management. It all, it's a question of retention, how long you want to keep the uh, data. So that's what it comes to cost. So for now, TSDB, we don't have any, uh, we, we retain the data forever. So we don't uh, discard any data even, it's like three years ago. There is a confusion on how do we do the drill down from, uh, from, uh, from uh, do we do the actual drill downs on Grafana? So the question is no, we don't do the actual drill downs on uh, uh, Grafana. Basically, what, what, what we do is, what we leverage Grafana is to get those uh, different types of plots in a single dashboard so that the correlation is, man manual correlation is much more easier. So uh, if you looked at our uh, uh, initial first screen, we had several uh, screens. So one of, one of the screens will give you uh, different views of what is happening in AZ level or what is happening at the site level, right from the entry point till the uh, application level. So each screens are meant for uh, trying to doing, trying to give an insights of what is happening at uh, each level. Uh, so to your question, one of the key factors that we are <laughs> lacking in Grafana is the drill down capabilities. So if I wanted to drill down from one data source to or link from one data source to that, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't have that kind of uh, flexibility here. So purely for, uh, we get the visibility from multiple data sources in one dashboard. That way, if I'm looking at a failure on a TSTB, and uh, the next, and the similar, and the same dashboard will have a visualization into top end errors on a particular cluster, or top end clusters that are having problems. And then top, and the next level is uh, top AZs. And then next one is uh, top clusters. Next, uh, within a cluster, what are the top uh, exceptions? That level of drill down, you get it in a similar, uh, we heavily use top end. And just to add, so it also depends on the who is using. Uh, so let's say command center mainly, they care for the signals, okay? This is the area where the problem is. Now for the drill down, so, Developers use log views, Elasticsearch, for uh, uh, depending on the users, it's specifically. Yeah, so that's why uh, in the uh, our main architecture slide we had uh, three or four different components uh, use power of uh, whatever uh, suits the best for that. So the other other question is how other developers and the domain owners or the pool owners or the cluster owners they have a similar set of uh, Grafana dashboards which are pertaining for their own domains. Okay. Are you planning to open source our Hadoop product? Uh, the Hadoop product, it, it's, there are a couple of challenges with the Hadoop product. The reason is it's very specific for our own, uh, uh, the way in which it's catered towards our application logging. So we, uh, we have our own library. The uh, application teams use our libraries to ingest and it go it 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 is it is not it's a proprietary kind of standard. It's not, it's not general enough. It's so not it's general enough. That's it's the, kind of like extracting something in the payload of the data and parsing it in such a way that we are able to plot it. So it's yeah, kind of specific. Yeah. You you nailed it. It's not general enough. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thanks a lot for this. <laughs>